the three of us agree, but Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion and the WEF, they don't quite agree that how, well, they don't talk about how environmentally damaging war is and the carbon emission, carbon dioxide emissions caused by war. <laughs> We're silent on that matter. You know, we have we have to stop farming. Farming is more dangerous than waging war. <laughs> yeah, Greta Thunberg, Greta well, Thunberg points out the United States military is the largest polluter on the planet, and it's not even close. She never pointed that out, but she somehow, thinks, she somehow thinks cow farts are the problem. Yeah, I think you need to yeah. go back to school. I think you missed a little bit too much school there, Greta. If you decide that you want to preserve your privacy and make sure all the data that goes in and out of your computer is encrypted, then check out NordVPN. My affiliate link will give you something like a two-thirds discount on some of their packages. I invested £25,000. Today, that investment is worth £5 million. Say hello to our hero, the Hydrogen Energy Release Optimizer. Limitless power, zero emissions. It's great to have you, Steve. Thank you so Thank you. much. Um, Gordon and I have been chatting, and I'm going to declare this part two of the video, right? <laughs> we were talking about Just Stop Oil and the Ukraine war and everything, right? Now, if I can introduce you both, Gordon is a British journalist and a campaigner. He's particularly involved in the Julian, free Julian Assange campaign, and he and I do big videos on a regular basis. He's anti-war activist, pro-Palestinian. And I think he may not agree with me, but it seems to me when it comes to the whole climate change conversation, he has moved a little. He has moved a little, right? Uh, yeah, the, for sure. Yeah, the I that he and I have been talking. Uh, I'm all for Julian Assange. That's common ground. Oh yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Right. Already, right. Yeah, and and peace everywhere. I don't like the war. I don't like the war. No. No, yeah, there's two things we agree on already. This is going swimmingly, isn't it? Well, Steve, you and yeah. I, and I think Gordon, <laughs> the three of us agree. But Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion and the WEF, they don't quite agree that how, well, they don't talk about how environmentally damaging war is and the carbon emission, carbon dioxide emissions caused by war. <laughs> We're silent on that matter. You know, we have, we have to stop farming. Farming is more dangerous than waging war. <laughs> Yeah, Greta, Greta Thunberg, Greta well, Thunberg points out the United States military is the largest polluter on the planet, and it's not even close. She never pointed that out, but she somehow, thinks, somehow thinks cow farts are the problem. Yeah, I think you need to yeah. go back to school. I think you missed a little bit too much school there, Greta. Steve, well, I do like you. You're a good actress. Yeah, Steve, do you want to briefly introduce yourself? Well, um, I'm, I'm Steve Malloy. I have worked on environmental issues for uh, more than 30 years in a variety of forms. Uh, I am so politically incorrect, uh, industry will not touch me. And I'd like to think that's because, um, y you know, they're, um, they've, they've, they've swallowed Kool-Aid too. So, Very good. Very good. Well, look, how should we do this? Do you want to, Gordon, do you want to start by asking Steve a question and stuff? So we say with regards to um, climate change. Okay, um, Steve. Uh, nice to meet you, by the way. Um, nice to meet you. Well, I um, I come from a, 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 a background where I'm I'm very interested in science and physics. And uh, years ago, I, I took a course of physics in um, in this country uh, from the Open University. I actually just researched it at home. I didn't finish the course, I only did the first year because uh, life got in the way. But um, I, I actually was of the opinion years ago that um, there is no climate change. The, the, the earth has warmed up and cooled down throughout history. I know this. And that's the that's the, um, the, the, the opinion that I had. And then sort of like the propaganda. And I, I, you know, I call it propaganda now, but back then I thought it was science. And what I found out really is not, it's, it's not really science. It's people, people um, sh shining a very skewy mirror on science and presenting the facts for their own agenda, you know, but we don't need to go. But anyway, I was swayed by this science course because the first question in this course on physics was about climate change and the effect that carbon has on the atmosphere and explained how carbon trapped heat and explained how we're taking carbons out of the ground. I don't need to have to explain it to you, but that's sort of what convinced me to come over to the uh, to believe in that yeah, climate change is the, the big thing and it's man-made. And that was critical that it's man-made and it's our fault. Um, so I bought into it. Now, since then, 
um, I have seen um, unscrupulous uh, companies um, take advantage of this. And you're always going to get the, this in society. So I was sort of on the opinion until recently that climate change still was real. It still is man-made, but then corporations are still using it and weaponizing it for their own means. The, the two things are true. But now I'm I'm sort of like I haven't got a foot in either camp. I'm just I'm tired of being dictated to uh, what the science is by so-called journalists that are fucking lied to us about fucking everything all their fucking lives. Yeah. And I, I, I just, I would rather everybody get involved in this than just a tiny few people who are then going to dictate everything to us. I would rather we have a more democratic view on this and actually all get involved in figuring out what the facts are and what is actually causing this and what to do about it, if it is causing anything at all. Yeah. That's so, so, you know, when I started working on environmental issues 33 years ago, um, it's not because I was interested in the environment. It's just because, you know, I wound up working for, uh, 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 I needed a job. <laughs> and so I had a background in statistics and science and law. And so this, you know, a guy that did lobby hired me. And, but, you know, when I, and I started working on a variety of issues, uh, air quality, water quality, radiation, all sorts of toxic chemicals, stuff like that. And so I'd see things like, well, this chemical causes cancer, this pesticide causes cancer. And, and you know, a lot of people, their, their curiosity, they have no curiosity, they'll just take that, you know, something causes cancer and runs with it. And so, but what I did instead was be like, well, how do you know that this causes cancer? And so I would do the research and find out that, well, they really don't know. They're just sort of assuming this or they, they've rigged some sort of laboratory test. And and so to segue that into climate then, um, well, I won't segue into climate yet. So let's, the you know, uh, I met Al Gore um, about 20 years ago and we were talking about the ozone, the Montreal Protocol, you know, the banning of uh, so-called um, ozone depleters like CFCs. And, you know, he said, well, the real point of that was to show that we could get an international treaty, because as it turns out, no one really understands the ozone layer and the thinning of it and what's happening. And so we've banned all these refrigerants because of some basic chemistry. And it's, you know, it's true in a laboratory that that chlorofluorocarbons, when they hit an ozone molecule, they destroy the ozone molecule. Okay, that's true in a laboratory. But then that became embedded in, in this international treaty, and a guy won the Nobel Prize for that simple chemical reaction. But of course, the, the real atmosphere is a lot more complicated. Now, moving to climate change, yes, it's true that carbon dioxide and methane and uh, you know other chemicals uh, are you know they, they have this sort of you know green greenhouse property uh, where they they slow down the transfer of heat. But you know doing that in a laboratory is a lot different than the actual atmosphere. You know, there's only a little bit of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, a little bit of methane, a lot of water vapor. Water vapor, you know, is the vast majority of the greenhouse effect. And greenhouse effect is, is real, although misnamed. But so, but you know, water vapor and CO2 and methane all do slow down the transfer of heat out of the atmosphere. But the question is, CO2 is only like four hundredths of a percent of the atmosphere. And is that is is CO2 really the tail that wags the the climate dog? And um, so when I first started working on these on climate, you know, in the 90s, you know, I, I just sort of out of ignorance went along with this notion that, OK, well, CO2 causes some warming, um, but I don't think it's going to be catastrophic. And, and so, I, you know, I carried that forward for you know almost 20 years. Um, but I, I've gone back to, I don't think, I don't think there's any evidence that CO2 actually, in fact, or I, I don't think there's any evidence that emissions today are actually warming the planet. What I've come to the conclusion is that, you know, since, since we got out of the cooling period in the 1970s, you know, there's a, the earth, the earth seems to have cooled between 1940 and 1980. After 1980, we've had this series of El Ninos and every time there's an El Nino, the temperature bumps up a little bit. So there's been a little bit warming, but every time it's, it's when we have these El Ninos and then after the El Nino, the temperature just kind of flat and drifts down maybe and it goes up again. So and right now, you know, we've had no warming since mid 2014. And then we had an El Nino and it, it bumped things up a little bit. And that's why we have we've had no warming and we're looking at another El Nino. So I think there may be some warming coming up. But it's these El Ninos that, in my view, are causing the slight warming we've seen where we, we've seen. Um, not not emissions, and so that's kind of where where I am right now. And, and Steve, I asked Gordon earlier, and I'm not a scientist, 
right? <laughs> I'm not allowed to have an opinion, really. Who, who else is a scientist in the <laughs> <laughs> but, but this 0.04% carbon dioxide, you know, is it really a bigger influence than the sun or cosmic radiation or the magnetosphere or the ICTZ or the Beaufort gyre or the Milankovitch cycles or, you know, volcanoes, all that stuff, right? And I didn't mention El Nino and El Nina, right? Um, so, so and, you know, and I agree with you. I don't think it's that that big a deal. The other thing I was going to say is just slip my mind. But over to you, Gordon. <laughs> Maybe um, what I wanted to pick up from your uh, from what you said there right, was um, uh, you mentioned the, the, the variety of, of, of factors here. There are huge amounts of different factors. You were talking about our El Nino to um, to consider here, um, and and it, it it would be just like our media, wouldn't it, to be to to leave out giant factors and concentrate on a small factor that um, promoted whatever agenda that, that they they were being told to promote, like so they did with COVID. So, so I understand that. <laughs> they, left, they left out strengthening the immune system. They left out vitamin D. They left out ivermectin. They left out being fit and healthy. They left out mixing with people because they left out religious worship because all that stuff is good for your health. No, just have if you want to hear the rest of this conversation, <laughs> which is just simply and extraordinary and enjoyable, come over to bit.ly slash crypto rich odyssey. Bit.ly slash crypto rich odyssey. I'll have the link in the description below.